Welcome. Today I'm going to be going over my top 10 favorite games list. But I'm also going over some of my friends. Uh, they have given me their top 10 favorite lists as well. And so this is going to be a video comparing our favorite games with each other's favorite games. There might be some games that uh, they like in the, that, that are in their top 10, that are in my top 10. And um, we also um, have, I have also decided uh, they've given me uh, code names for their names. So I'll be using their code names for these videos. They know who they are. And um, I think this will be just pretty fun just to, just to see where we all compare with our games. And so um, let's get started. So let's start. We're gonna. The format is we're gonna start with the uh, least of the ten favorites, all the way up to the favorite, and uh, we'll try to do at least six through ten in this video, and um, the top five in the next video after this. So, and another thing, since I don't know a lot of the games that they put on the list, I've never, I've never actually even played before. So I may not be doing a lot of commentary on the games. I'll try to be, and I'll try to be brief, brief with uh, the games that are mine as well. So uh, this is mostly just to see where we all have our favorites at. So let's get started with number ten. Okay. So the first game, uh, the first person that will be going for number ten is uh, Carpar Copernicus, and his number 10 is Forbidden Sky. So I've never played this game before, Forbidden Sky. I've heard it's a co-op game, though, and uh, I know he, he really likes this game a lot. So, but I don't know much else about this game other than the fact that it is a co-op game. So uh, either you will uh, survive together or you'll lose together. So it's just an interesting little co-op game. And I, I gotta say, I love that rocket. That's pretty cool. The rocket is a really cool addition to that game. So, um, anyways, let's move on to Kathy's favorite uh, number 10. So, Kathy's number 10 is called Hand and Foot, which, once again, I don't know what this game really is about, other than that it's a variation of Canasta. So, playing cards. So, it's a game with playing cards, and uh, the jack is... The jack is up there at the very top, and there's a heart. So there's this is a card game with actual playing cards, and this is this is what he chose for his number ten, hand and foot canasta. All right, one punch Ben. His number ten is exploding kittens. So apparently, it's a card game for people who are into kittens and explosions, and laser beams. So, the ages is 7 plus, so it doesn't seem like a... a it, it definitely seems like a, a family game, for sure. Um, exactly, I, I, other than that, though, I don't really know anything about this game. But this was his, his number 10, Exploding Kittens. All right. My number 10 is... Baron Park. So this is a polyomino game. I sometimes I sometimes say it a different way, but I'm pretty sure I pronounced it correctly. A polyomino game. And you're going to be laying tiles down and you're going to try to fill in a grid and uh, there's uh you basically want to fill it up as much as possible. You want to completely fill it up to end the game. First person to do that will end the game. And that's basically what you want to do. You have tiles, and you're trying to, you know, put them together, and it's sort of like a puzzle almost, putting a puzzle together. But this is a game about, also about bears, and about building a sort of, not a, not necessarily a zoo, but an animal park for bears. For goby bears, for polar bears, for panda bears, 
and for koala bears. Not that koalas are actually bears, of course, but they decided to put them in because, after all, you know, they are sometimes called uh, koala bears. And this is another, uh, this is a game from Lookout Games. So my number 10 is Baron Park. Okay. Let's move on to number nine. Okay, so Carpernicus's number nine is Carcassonne. That's his number nine. Now, I know a lot about this game. It's a Z-Man game. It's a tile-laying game with maples, and uh, you... You, you, the setup is super easy. You just place a tile down in the middle of the, t of the table and then give everyone, you know, a, a meeple in their, a bunch of meeples in their color. And then you're going to be placing a tile down on your turn and trying to match with the other tiles that are already on the table. And then you're going to place your meeple down on the tile you just placed. And depending on where he is put on the tile, he might become a knight. He might become a uh, highwayman, which is sort of like a robber, I suppose. Uh, he could become a farmer, for instance. So, Or he could even be a, a monk, if there was a, a monastery involved on the tile. And that's basically what you do in the game. And it's pretty fun. The game is over until, uh, isn't over until all of the tiles have been placed. So obviously, uh, putting it away takes a little bit longer than setting it up. But still, that is... Carcassonne, and that is Carp Copernicus's number 10. Okay, so Caffey's number 10, or yeah, sorry, that, sorry, Copernicus's number 9 is Carcassonne, and Caffey's number 9 is Ticket to Ride. So, this is Ticket to Ride. This is a light, easy game. Um, very easy. If you like trains, you'll love this game, especially if you like trains. But it's a very easy game where you're grabbing cards, and uh, you have a huge board, and you're trying to uh, basically build a line of uh, train, train, train cars on the train tracks. And you're trying to get from one location to another, possibly, of your um trains basically so basically that's uh ticket to ride so that is caffey's number nine ticket to ride okay so one punch ben's number nine is Ben's number nine is Settlers of Catan. All right, so this is a pretty popular game. It's pretty common. Um, most people know what this game is. Uh, you'll be uh, trying to uh, build settlements and uh, roads along the lines on these hexes. And uh, the first player to score, I believe it was 10 points, I think it is, um, the first person to do that, you know, wins the game. And uh, But in order to build settlements and turn them into cities and in order to build roads, you're going to need uh, resources to do so. And you only get resources when a certain number is rolled and you happen to have a settlement next to that number, or should I say adjacent to that number, and then you'll get the corresponding resource for it as well. Now, it's really hard to get some of these resources because it really just depends on how often that number is rolled. And so, and you also, since there's also other players playing with you, um, you will have a harder time getting certain resources than others for sure. 
And so that's why this game is so pretty fun because it's so fun because you'll also be doing a lot of trading with other players um, or even just to the um, but you'll be mostly doing trading with other players to try to get resources that they get a lot of that you are not getting a lot of so that way you can build your roads and your settlements and your cities or even buy certain cards as well to help you score extra points that way as well. And so that's that's Catan, light, easy, simple game. And that is One Punch Ben's number nine. Okay, so my number nine is Isle Bound. All right, so this is my number nine. It's a Red Raven game, and uh, you're going to be visiting islands, maybe even conquering islands, or using diplomacy at certain islands. And when I say islands, I mean isles. So you're going to be visiting different isles, um, visiting them, or conquering them. And then if you're going to try to conquer them, you can uh, train sea serpents to help you take over the island. You can also hire pirates to help you take over the island. And um, it's, it's just a really lot, really fun game going to different isles on your boat. You'll have a crew. There's lots of different types of uh, interesting races in this game. Lizard people, and there's a, um, a, a parrot humanoid, and, and uh, frog people, and fish people, and stuff like that. So the game is just a really, fan is really fun. It's got a lot of fantasy involved, but it's still um, a pretty strategic game as well. So that is my number nine, Islebound. Okay. So now it is number number eight is up next. Number eight. And Carpernicus's number eight is a game we've already talked about and showed it is Settlers of Catan. That is Copernicus's number eight. So since we already talked about it, we'll just say it's a light, easy game and it's his number eight. So we will move on to Caffey's number eight and his number eight is called Magic Maze. Now, it may be called Magic Maze, but it's not really necessarily about magic. I've played this game with him at least once, and it was just so fun. This game, you're supposed to be as quiet as a mouse. You're not supposed to say anything to anybody. You have these, uh, you're each uh, controlling these, th these characters and they're trying to find keys, and they're going through portals and things like that through this giant mall, which is almost like a maze or a labyrinth. And not only that, but each person only has, like, um, you're not controlling any one particular character. You're actually controlling uh, four characters altogether. Each player is controlling four characters. However, each player can only move in a certain direction. You know, uh, one player can only go left, one player can only go right, one, one player can only go north, one player can only go south, you know, and then one player can only go upstairs, and one player can only go through portals and stuff like that. And so, because there's no talking allowed between other players, uh, and it is a co-op game, trying to get all four, uh, trying to get out of the maze, basically, with the four heroes and stuff like that, the, these four people, and there's only three that I can see on the board, but it's just a lot of fun because you can't talk to each other during this game. You can't uh, give anybody hints, so you really sometimes have to be patient almost because you might think it's an obvious move to, to, to go right here, but the other players, they might be like, with the player that's supposed to go right doesn't may not may not pick up on that right away and you do have a very limited time in order to do it there's a timer so you don't have like all day to wait for them so you, of course you want them to rush but in the, at the same time you can't tell them hey go right so and so go right you have you have to move them right so they so, but you can't say that 
you want to, and, and that's what's so fun about this game, because you really just want to tell them, but you can't because that's against the rules. And so that is Kathy's number eight, Magic Maze. A pretty fun co-op game, if I do say so myself. Nice, nice choice. Okay, so One Punch Ben's favorite uh, game, as, as far as number eight is concerned, is a game that is definitely on other lists, and that is Everdell. And we won't talk too much about it because uh, I'm we're going to see this game again for sure. But uh, this is definitely a worker placement game. And uh, it's a very beautiful game too. So it's very beautiful. It's a worker placement game. You're building a town in this beautiful setting of Everdell. And you get to play as a particular uh, critter. And there's lots of different critters to choose from. And, and, it's, and it's a Starling game as well. So that's Everdell, and we will talk about this again, because it will come up for sure again. So that is, um, that is One Punch Ben's number eight, Everdell. Okay, my number eight is Dominion Menagerie. Now... When I mean Dominion, I'm, I'm, I, may, I mainly mean the core game, obviously. This is an expansion to the core game, or to the base game of Dominion. But it's my favorite expansion and uh, for Dominion, because it's all about animals. Um, you can play... If this is a deck-building game. So Dominion is a deck-building game, and it's from Real Grande Games. And in Dominion... You're going to try to build a deck, and you're going to use various cards to help you do so, various action cards to help you do so. And then in this game, it allows you to play those action cards as a particular animal, like Way of the Seal, Way of the Mouse, Way of the Pig, Way of the Chameleon, Way of the Frog. So there's 20 different ways, and each one is a way of an animal, and you only play with one of them per game. So you're going to have a huge variety when you play Dominion Menagerie. And this expansion also um, added some something new to the game called Exiling, and an Exile mat, and that Exile is just awesome. I love Exiling stuff to my Exile mat, because... There's lots of cards in this game that are pretty useless, but give you tons of victory points, which is the object of the game, is to get the most victory points, and they're all on cards. And so you have these useless cards that you can't do anything with, but if you are playing with this expansion, you can exile them to an exile mat, maybe with a particular card. And so Dominion Menagerie, you know, is definitely my most favorite Dominion expansion. And so that is my number... Eight, Dominion Menagerie. Okay, so that means we're moving on to number number seven. Number seven is next. So number seven. So Copernicus's number seven is apples to apples. So this is a party game. This is a game you play with many people. And the, the object of the game is to, uh, oh, uh, as a demonstration, there's a card in the middle of the table that one person has uh, put out, and it's called um, Soggy. And then other players, they'll have a bunch of different cards, maybe names of uh, famous actors, um, maybe just, just uh, uh, items and different things. And um, they're going to try to they're they're going to try to pick a card that closely identifies with Soggy. And for instance, one time I played Apples to Apples, and it helped me win the game. Um, I didn't have much in the way of Soggy, but I had one card that said "In a Fishbowl," and I put that down, and the person chose it as the closest to Soggy that was available, or. Maybe just because the person likes that card that so much, they chose it. And so sometimes you have to, you kind of have to know your friends, what they like and what they don't like, because sometimes they will just choose a card 
because they like it. And so that is Apples to Apples, a pretty fun game. So that is Copernicus's number seven. Okay, so Caffey's number seven is another game that I enjoy. It's Dominion. So Dominion, this is the this is the base game of Dominion here. And even though I have the base game somewhere, I don't have this printing of it. I don't have the second edition. And this is probably, um, for new players, this is the most common one. They probably haven't seen the picture for the first edition if they are just recently getting into Dominion. But this is the second edition, and there was obviously some changes. Uh, new cards were uh, re re replaced some of the old ones. But this is a real grande game uh, made by uh, Donald um, Vaccarino. And it, like I said, it's a deck-building game. It's a really fun game, um, for sure. And so that is uh, Caffey's number seven, Dominion. Okay, so One Punch Ben's number seven is another game I've never heard of. It's called The Mind. Mind. Actually, I think I have heard of it, but I don't know anything about it other than the fact of its title. Now, I don't know why there's a uh, rabbit-looking thing on the front of the cover, but it is apparently a Pandasaurus game. So I don't have any Pandasaurus games either. At least I don't think I do. So, but I don't know much about this game other than that it's called The Mind. But it is his number seven, The Mind. One Punch Ben, The Mind. Okay, my number seven is Megaland. All right, so this is Megaland. This is a Red Raven game. It's a, a pretty uh, quick game, too. You could probably play this in less than an hour, easily. Maybe 30 minutes. I would say 30 minutes to an hour at most, but, my, but I think that's also including the setup. If you include the setup of the game, it might take an hour. Um, uh, this is a game where you'll be going through levels, okay? You're like, it's sort of like in a video game. You take on a level, then you take on the next level. And if the, if, if the first level does a lot of damage to your hearts, then you might want to leave before you lose all your hearts, kind of like in a video game. And the object of the game is to get um, treasures. You get one treasure on each level, and so you want to bring back as many treasures as you can, so that way you can build buildings in your town. And that's the object of the game. The player who gets 20 coins, the first player to do that ends the game, and whoever has the most coins at the end of the game wins. So, so there's the uh, run through the level phase, there's the buy phase, and then there's the night phase. And there's some th many different things that can happen in the night phase, including the possibility of the game ending will always end in the night phase. And so that's, that's Mega Land, a pretty fun game for sure. And that is my number seven. Okay, so now it's time for number six. All right, so Copernicus's number six is once again, Everdell has shown up. So his number six is Everdale. It showed up twice. This is the second time it showed up. So um, so this is obviously a worker placement game, like I mentioned earlier. Um, there's lots of different uh, buildings you can build in this game. You won't build them all. It's impossible to build them all. And you know, there might even be some buildings you want to build, but you can't ever get because... They never show up, or the other players get them, because there's only one or two of the buildings anyway. Um, but there's various animals involved in this game, various critters on the cards especially, all sorts of different critters. So just a beautiful game. Um, there's a giant tree for this game that you can put stuff on top of, so that's really cool as well. And so that's, that is um, Copernicus's number six. Everdale. Okay. 
Caffey's number six is Settlers of Catan. That is is that is his number six, Settlers of Catan. A light, easy game that we've already brought up. I think uh, this is the um, second time or third time? Um, yeah, this is the second time it's shown up. No, third time it's shown up. So this is the third time uh, Catan has shown up, which means um, three out of four of us have this on their list, Settlers of Catan. I don't have this on my list. So this one won't show up again. But this is uh, um, Caffey's number six, Settlers of Catan. Okay, One Punch Ben. His number six is another game I don't know anything about. Mission to Red Planet, or Mission Red Planet. Like I said, I don't know much about this game, but it obviously has something to do with Mars. There's lots of rockets involved by the looks of it. But other than that, I don't know anything about this game at all. And I don't know... I don't even know who made it, either. So, um, but it looks like it, it can have up to six players. So that's... That is One Punch Ben's number six. Mission Red Planet. Okay. So, my number six is... Wingspan. Wingspan is my number six. So, Wingspan is a game where you're going to be trying to fill up an aviary full of birds in three different environments. This is going to be involving just birds, unless you have the expansions, just birds from North America. Now, they might live in other places as well, but it focuses on birds that particularly live in North America, and there are hunt there are if you include all the expansions um there's over 200 different birds in the game and so each bird has a different ability so um so there's a lot of replayability in this game the game comes with a dice tower so you can put dice into it and it actually looks like a birdhouse so that's really cool it's just a really fun game and there's eggs involved in food because you have to feed your birds and you can lay eggs, lay eggs, because birds lay eggs, and there's a lot of uh, fun facts about each of the birds as well, including uh, their wingspan. Uh, that's also important to know in the game, how uh, how long or how wide, you know, their wings wings are, wingspan is. So that is my number six wingspan, and so we will get to the top five in the next video.